The Saltine Cracker Challenge, or simply the Saltine Challenge, is a food challenge or competition in which a person has 60 seconds in which to eat six saltines, also known as soda crackers, without drinking anything. All the crumbs must be eaten. Pictured is six Nob Nabisco brand saltines, each measuring 5 centimeters, 2 inches square. Although the challenge may sound trivial, it is actually very difficult because the crackers quickly exhaust the saliva in the mouth. Even though six saltines can fit in one mouth uh, at the same time, a minute is plenty of time to chew. The resulting mass of crumbs is too difficult to swallow with a dry mouth. Individual challenge. Pictured are office workers competing against the clock. The challenge is generally given as eating six saltines in a single minute, although the target is sometimes set at five or seven. Most people are able to eat two saltines without water, although patients affected by Sch Schrodinger's syndrome may lack the saliva necessary to eat for even this many. Doctors may use this test, the cracker test or cracker sign, to help diagnose the disorder. A 1996 Associated Press story used the challenge to illustrate the competitive nature and persistence of Tennessee Volunteers quarterback at the time, Peyton Manning. Having been bet that he could not eat his six saltines, Manning attempted them one by one and failed. Trying again, he stacked them on top of each other and succeeded. His roommate concluded, even something that was a joke, he was out to prove that he can do it. He can eat six saltine crackers, and he did. He works out techniques he can do on everything. Before the 2001-2002 season, Penn State Lady Lions basketball coach Renee Portland's cracker-eating ability helped her land star players Tanisha Wright and Jessica Colmuso. During a recruiting trip, the high schooler's amateur athletic union coach mentioned the cracker challenge, Wright failed, but Portland succeeded. Portland did not reveal her technique, but she did comment on the competitive drive. Obviously, there's a competitor and an old coach saying that I can do this. If I can do childbirth three times, six crackers can't be that hard. Other athletes connected with the challenge include baseball coach Brad Fisher and Derek Jeter. A photographer challenged by Jeter observed being competitive has become his way to relax. The challenge has been televised on morning news talk shows. In a 2001 er, The Early Show episode, Tom Bergeron took a bet that he could not eat uh, four saltines in a minute, and after attempting them all at once, he lost $40. Jane Clayson asked the staff member who had started the bet, how she knew the challenge, uh, to which she replied, college. Indeed, several college newspapers have noted the phenomenon on campus. In a July 2008 episode of Good Morning America, Ted Allen revealed that the food detective techs were unable to eat six saltines in a minute. All four anchors then tried it themselves and failed. Weather anchor Sam Champion compared the moisture absorption with lake snow effect. Allen allowed his contestants to eat the crackers in any order, even crushed up, but when Chris Cuomo wanted to load up with water beforehand, Allen disallowed the tactic, considering it uh, to unfairly bypass the central problem of the challenge. Competitive Races Pictured are eight high school juniors eating saltines. Older versions of the challenge include events where one competes to be the first person to eat some, cra uh, some number of crackers and then audibly whistle a tune. Such competitions are at least a century old. A 1970s episode of the educational television show Zoom, which encouraged children to try creative puzzles and games using minimal supplies, featured such a race. Contestants in this version of the race ate three saltines and then whistled. In Grafton, North Dakota, there is an annual competition in which contestants must eat four saltines and then whistle. 
For nine years, it was won by Mike Stalsom of Minto. A local legend is that he benefits from an extra salivary gland. Stoltman says that he requires two suction tubes at the dentist, and of the gland, I don't know for sure, but my orthodontist said she, he's never seen saliva like that. He was upset by Greg Shane of Oslo in the 2009 running, possibly because Stoltman had been celebrating his 40th birthday. Five-time winner Kelly Schlechniak Gaddy won the first place trophy in 2006, 2007, 2010, 2011, and 2012. Ambrose Mendy set a world record for eating three Jacob's Cream Crackers without drinking in 49.15 seconds on the 29th of October, 2002. Related Challenges Main Article Competitive Eating a similar test is the cinnamon challenge, in which a person must eat a tablespoon of cinnamon. Again, this is a small amount of a familiar food, but it quickly dries out the mouth's saliva, making the powder hard to swallow. Some who accept this challenge report that the cinnamon is especially unpleasant, and that its dust is comparable to pepper spray. Another related challenge is milk chugging, in which the person must drink a gallon of milk in the space of one hour and refrain from vomiting. The main barrier for the milk challenge is stomach capacity. Milk is also more difficult than water because fat and protein inhibit release into the small intestine. A similar stomach ch capacity challenge is the banana sprite challenge in which the person must eat two bananas and drink two large bottles of the soft drink sprite. Uh, um, the salt and ice challenge is a dangerous YouTube phenomenon wherein participants pour salt on their bodies and add ice. This causes a burning sensation, and participants vie to withstand the pain for the longest time. The mixture of salt and ice lowers the temperature of the mixture to significantly lower than the point of, uh, freezing point of water, and can quickly cause second or third degree injuries similar to frostbite. Due to the numbing sensation of the cold and the lack of sensation caused by nerve damage during the stunt, participants are often unaware of the extent of injuries sustained during the challenge and risking suffering second to third degree burns. Marks of the challenge are still visible after the challenge has been completed or failed. References for this article include Philipp Philippa Wingate and David Woodroff, 2008, The Family Book, Amazing Things to Do Together, New York Scholastic, page 160, ISBN 0-545-05757-4, Dustin Shipman, uh, article in the Joplin Globe, 2008, Kevin A.C. article in the San Diego Union Tribune, uh, 1999. Eric Buseman article uh, in The Lantern, 2003. Gene Weingarten, 2001, The Hypochondriac's Guide to Life and Death, Fireside Books, page 71, ISBN 0-684-8566-4. Four eight dash four, Russell Lafayette, uh, Cecil and J. Claude Bennett, Fred Plum, nineteen ninety six, Cecil Textbook of Medicine, twentieth edition, page one four eight eight, Edward D. Harris, Sean Ruddy, and William N. Keeley, two thousand five, Keeley's Textbook of Rheumatology. 7th edition, page 1109. Teresa M. Walker in the Oregonian, uh, 1996. Paul Zeiss in the Post-Gazette, 2002. Susan Slusser in the San Francisco Chronicle, 2000. Patrick Giardino in Men's Health, 2008. Filler Co-op Time. 
CBS early uh, CBS News, The Early Show, 2001. See also The Build-Off. Sign Off, The Early Show, CBS early, News, The Early Show, 2001. And see also the follow-ups, Leads, The C the Early Show, 8.30. CBS News, The Early Show, 2001. Uh, November 19th, Kenneth Ball, 2005, in Technician. Fernanda Diaz in Columbia Daily Spectator, 2005. Yarden Mayos in Student Life, 2006. Second Annual Dodge Field Day, The Dodge Idea, October 1908. Gian Spear in The Dallas Morning News, 1998. Mark Bechtel, Sports Illustrated, 2004. Grand Forks Herald, 2009. Associated Press, 2009. The Daily Record, Brian McIver, 2004. Luke Young, Technician, 2006. Health Pop on CBS News, 2012. And NBC Los Angeles, Janet Quack, Retrieved, 2013.